We have to go find Yennefer's room at the inn to get clothing to go to the wake. Switch back to this one. Am I allowed in? Wonder if he's as strong as he looks. Our valiant king! Great is our loss. All must see the change your demise has wrought. We offer you our means, the symbol of our valor, as you were the valor of the Isles. Our skulls shall be bare till a new king Ooh, sits I... upon Skelliger's throne. Hmm. Let's There's a barber here. Clan Let's drink to Clan on Crete. Let's take on the burden of this farewell. Got me eye on you. I wonder if we can get some Skellige specific hairstyles. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I don't mean to. Do you want to move away? Sorry. Hello. Greetings. Smooth seas this morn. As if the gods themselves were paying their respects to the great Konung Bran. You a tailor? I am. Only one in the Isles, most like. What, well, tailor for the head? <laughs> Glad they look at what you got. Wise man. No common rags among my wares. Oh, you're actually a tailor. Oh, I don't have to buy my own clothing for the wake, right? I don't think so. Oil. Take it, you're good with scissors. Give me a haircut. Tain't something I usually do, but it wouldn't be right to turn down a traveler. We should trim our beard a little bit, so it's not like a messy savage going to a funeral. Uh, just just trim it a little bit, like previously. Oh, it's the same hairstyles, right? Uh, what was the one that we had previous to this one? Was it the first one? Shaved except for ponytail. We can try it. That actually does look a little bit neater. Huh, okay. So long. Yeah? Look a little bit more presentable for the wake. Some fist Beware fighting going on here. Lurk in the Highlands. Outlanders are welcome to try to. Glory and honor range every which where. Level 30 though, right? Erika? Uh -oh. Like it here. Oh. This has got to be Yen's room. She always did like space and luxury. How much money does she have? Wait, I thought we were going to the inn. This is her personal... <laughs> hmm. The stuffed unicorn. She fixed it. Oh... My god. Let's just get the change of clothing and go. <laughs> Wild hunt. Oh, there's a lot to examine in this room. Yeah, apparently Yen's pretty rich, right? So we'll just, you know, can you can you sponsor me? I'll just take all your stuff. All right. Good, good. Wow, look at my collection of fancy swords and some not so fancy swords. Pretty cool though when you look at it like this, because they all have different handles and stuff. And uh, the blunt sword that I stole from the theater people. Cool. I will put my trophy in here as well. Chort trophy. I can sell that. I don't need that. Awesome. Oh, oh. seems a little bit personal. <laughs> My thoughts turn with increasing frequency to the idea of capturing a djinn. If I could just harness its power, there is much I would gain. Amos Variepsis's tome confirms what I have long suspected, 
that despite my failure to do so previously, taming a jinn is in fact possible. According to Var Ipsus, the difficulties involved in bending such a being to one's will can be overcome. He managed to do so, at the least. Alas, this does not mean his methods will necessarily be useful to me. Each jinn is different, each case requires a singular approach. I've more experience unraveling such magic riddles than almost anyone else alive, and if Geralt, with his talent for wrestling unruly magic beings, agrees to help, we just might find a way to do it. The problem is, we must first find a jinn, a daunting task unto itself. Oh, Yennefer looking for a jinn. I mean, that's kind of how we met, right? Get rid of these contracts? Leave these ones alone for now. Yeah, the brochures. Glamour. Scent of lilac and gooseberries, even with the lid on. Taste hasn't changed. Hmm. We're all like several centuries old here. Our tastes don't really change once they settle down. No idea how she managed to bring so much clothing. Must have hired out a galleon. As usual, black and white. How is she so rich? Because she's with Nilfgaard? Hmm. It looks like we're gonna have to come back here periodically because of the stash. Nope. Hey, you have a megascope too. Her megascope? Guess she never goes anywhere without it. As Philippa Eilhart said, megascopes and toothbrushes, deeply personal possessions. <laughs> Did she say that? Tessia de Vries, the poison source, still turns to it for inspiration. Tessia de Vries, Yennefer's mentor? No one is born a mage. We still know too little about genetics and mechanisms of heredity. We devote too little time and resources to this research. Sadly, we still conduct trials in the inheritance of magic ability using, let us say, natural methods. The results of these pseudo-experiments far too often can be seen in the gutters of our cities and begging outside our temple walls. Far too often, we see and encounter brain-dead and moronic women, women covered in their own spittle and passing themselves as prophetesses, seers, village diviners, and miracle workers. Cretans with brains degenerated by the uncontrolled power they inherited. These simpletons and fools can themselves breed, can pass on their abilities and continue the degeneration. Is anyone capable of foreseeing or defining what the last link in such a chain will look like? Most of us mages lose the ability to procreate as a result of changes and disruptions to the functioning of our pituitary glands. Others, sorceresses most often, mature into their magic powers with gonads intact. They can conceive and give birth and have the audacity to consider that good fortune a blessing. Yet I repeat, no one is born a mage and no one should be. Aware of the gravity of what I write, I provide an answer to the question posed at the summit in Sedaris. I answer with every certitude. Each of us must decide what she wants to be, a sorceress or a mother. Oh, but there are some sorceresses that can give birth. That's news to me. The thing with Yennefer was that she was always very... Like, this was a kind of a touchy subject for her, because she would like children, probably. Chronicles of Redania. Oh my god. Elegant Skellige shirt, Skellige tunic, breeches. <laughs> Can I have all of it? Put on new clothes for your meeting with Yennefer. Yennefer said something that complements black and white. Oh. That's not quite what I had in mind when I saw that icon. Yellow and brown? No. Oh, this one's even worse. What the heck? It's too bright. Don't we just have like a normal black shirt or something? These are the only two choices we have. Seriously? Okay, well for the shoes. Skellige festive slippers. <laughs> okay, uh, well. Yeah, that's a Skellige thing apparently. The breeches? 
We got a choice between two of them, but they look pretty similar. No, we can't really see it without the, um, the shirts covering it. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I don't really care either way. Both of them look kind of... Hmm. Is this really it? Just like this? Oh, maybe it's because I'm wearing the gloves right now. That's why it looks so weird? Uh... Well, between this one and this one, it would be this one. But I don't feel like either of these really complement black or white. Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's all we got to choose from, so whatever, I guess. Right. Just not something I'd ever wear. But what don't we do for our... Hmm. Who exactly is she to me? I'm not imagining this, right? But I feel like ever since we got to Skellige, everything's been so much more overt in relation to the, the romance stuff. Is it because I turned down Triss? So they're just going... Hold on, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Are they just going all out on the other option that I didn't reject yet? If I want to meet Yennefer at the Care Troll Keep, that's probably the place that we were going to last time, but I didn't end up going there yet. I wonder if we can just, yeah, cut straight through the town instead of wrapping back up. Uh, this looks promising here. Oh. I, uh, uh, <laughs> well, maybe we shouldn't be bringing the crossbow and the swords into the funeral tomb. Isn't that what happens every time anyway? We go to a party and they're like, hey, hand over the swords, blah blah blah. Speaking of parties, the party that we went to with Triss, that Nilfgaardian doublet that we were wearing, that was black and white, wasn't it? Kind of looked better than this. But um, don't get the impression that Skellige people like Nilfgaard, so... <laughs> probably we should just stick to wearing Skellige stuff. No. Yeah, I think we're going to the right place, just judging by where this is going. I think? Would be really bad if we fell off now. Don't look down. <laughs> got me eye on you. Uh, got me eye on you too. Uh. Uh, we just moved the lift down there. Don't really know what that does. Can I take this? Well, I already read it, so whatever. This is their guard tower. This place is so big. I don't know, This uh, the size of everything is just different. Feels much more medieval castle-y. Let us pay homage to Bran of Clan Twisek. May our horns echo midst the cliffs and peaks. On my mark, blow! Lady Yennefer, so pleased you've come to pay your respects to my dead husband. Oh, they did him good. Knew Cut his paunch open. His Pulled out his guts and made him run around the tree till he ran out. A guts. I'm no clue what they gave Bran was a great <laughs> ruler. He needs a worthy successor. You speak as though you have someone in mind. Skellige's troubles very much derive from it not being a hereditary monarchy. Any upstart can be king and destroy his predecessor's legacy. The King of the Isles is a more symbolic position. That should change as well. A strong leader who wields true power. That is what the times require. Hello. I'm Geralt, a witcher. Berna, Queen of Skellige. I'm glad we've met, but you must forgive me. Judy calls. Lovely outfit. You look... Dashing. Really? Thank you. You're dazzling. <laughs> you know I really missed your candidness. I'm glad we're here together. Starting to question Yennefer's fashion tastes a little bit. This is dashing? Really? <laughs> okay. <sighs> Don't like funerals. Don't like feasts. I know. You also dislike underdone meat and being teleported. But sometimes we must overcome our disgusts and prevail. Yes, mommy. We should mingle before they all get drunk. There'll be no talking to anyone then. Good thinking. I don't know what Krach wants, but when we meet with him, we should have clear minds. 
I'm not gonna drink. Why dull my senses when I'm in such pleasant company? Do you plan to compliment me all evening? I plan to tell you what I think. Oh my. Last night was <laughs> See? It seems pretty damn overt, doesn't it? Berna. Yeah, Yennefer was getting all cozy with the queen here. She all... How long has she been here again? For as long as I've been in Velen and Novigrad. So I guess people know who she is already. Berna likewise refused to hide her disgust with the custom of choosing a ruler by vote of the Jarls. She dreamed of establishing a hereditary kingship in Skellige and thought the ideal dynasty to hold it was her own, starting with her and Bran's son, the young Svanridge. Ah, yeah, we heard people talking about that earlier too. So the ruler in Skellige is chosen by a vote. Oh, if King Bran dies, it doesn't mean his son becomes the new king. Huh, interesting system, especially for a place that places so much importance on traditions, because when I think tradition, I think heredity. But no, here it's not like that. Hmm. Ah, oh, they did all good. sorts of trape about Cut his punch open, pulled out his guts and made him run. Why is everybody- A guts. Tell the others. I wonder what they'll say. Of balls about it. Grand those swords, but I prefer me trusty axe. I don't know why everybody in Skellige likes talking to- uh, uh, Excuse me! <sighs> Y'all very rude. Ah. Yes? <laughs> Hello? Hey, that compliments black so, and white. What have you brought for the farewell feast? Bread, sheep's milk cheese. Our wagon's full of loot we ripped from the black ones. Last We've also was... wine from the Oof. temples of Melitoli, remote ones. Wonder what'll please Bran more. Your vittles or our ward booty. Skellige really dislikes Nilfgaard. Yeah, their position is a lot more clearer than the people in Novigrad. Wait, but Yennefer right now is not here on official capacity of the Nilfgaardian king, right? Because otherwise, I don't see why people would take kindly to her. Geralt, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Mm. Your beard. Why did you decide to grow it out? Don't I just really shaved! Hmm. Must say it suits you. Those swords, but I prefer me trusty axe. You know I just shaved, right? <laughs> like 20 seconds ago. Lady Yennefer. Sir. Greetings, Arnvald. My companion is Geralt of Rivia. I am honored. My shirt matches his. Yeah, it's like a Skellige symbol or something. Nice to meet you too. Quite a few guests. They come to bid their king farewell. They come to see the claimants to the crown. We wanted to talk to Croc on Crate. The Jarl will join us shortly. He's assigned you a place of honor at the table just beside his daughter Ceres. Follow me, please. They've seated us here. I asked them to. Wanted to meet the notorious witcher Geralt. We've met. Don't remember? That was ages ago. Yalmer and I were children when you last visited Orda. But you should meet your face mates. Allow me the dubious honor. That's Halbjorn, son of Holger Blackhand. Blue boy Lugus, Madman Lugus' firstborn. And choking down a stockfish over there is Otric on Hindar. These are all claimants? Okay. <laughs> uh, you're you're Ceres, right? The daughter. Forgive me. I remember our meeting all those years ago, but I don't recall your name. Ceres on crate. Crack her da, and her big brother Yalmer call a sparrowhawk. A Yal's daughter she is. Fat lot of good it does her. Ceres is jealous. For the one among us who performs the greatest feat will be crowned king. <laughs> The feats are a sideshow. Our fathers will choose who will wear the crown. What do you think they spoke to Crack about? You talk like that because you're short of strength and skill. But remember when Hjalmar challenged us all to a race up the mount? You didn't stand with us then. As he buried his axe in that stump at the top to mark his victory, you were warming your chicken bones by the fire. Had my reasons for not participating. But I would have won then, as I'd win now. Hmm, now that you mention him, just noticed Hjalmar's not here. My brother walks his own paths. But 
about the race, why don't we repeat it? I'm willing to challenge any of you, Witcher included. If I beat him to the top, venture to say that'll be a feat, eh? So you're in. If the Witcher's in. Geralt? Right now? But I just sat down. I didn't even eat yet. <laughs> okay. Gladly. What are the rules? Whoever pulls Hjalmar's axe from the stump at the top of the hill wins. Stray off the path and you lose. And here I was, ready to puke from all the boredom. Let's go! This is awake, people. What? Okay. We're here. From this spot, you must reach the top of that mount. At the summit, you'll see the stump of an oak. Yalma's axe buried in it. Whoever pulls the axe from the stump first, wins. I'm ready. You'll start when I sound the horn. Shall we put some coin on it, Lugos? Actually, dog shade idea. You never pay up. Go! <laughs> Hooray! Axe handles rotten! So it's like a horse race, but without a horse, right? Same principles about the stamina apply. Use it all up ASAP, I guess. Oh my god, there's goats. Come on. Oh, I'm not on the path right now. Shoot! Can I... <laughs> we're okay, we're okay. Oh, here. I gotta look at the line Show on the... Me what you've got. <laughs> I gotta look at the line on the map, because sometimes it leads me to different places. We're doing pretty okay right now, though. Well, she challenged the Witcher, so I don't think she should be expecting to win. <laughs> when we're on horseback... See, Roach is not a Witcher horse, right? So it's not like she's super special, but I'm super special. <laughs> yeah, uh, this lady, this Scar lady, was uh, the girl I saw earlier on in the night during the pirate thing. Yeah, I don't think Skellige people are that sexist, because she seems... Pretty into the crowd, with the boys and all. There you go. I won, but only by a hair. No such thing. There's winning and there's losing, and I lost. We best go back to the week. Let's. We left for so long, it's daytime here now. <laughs> See the wakes in full swing. Lost sight of you, who won? I lost. I lost to a witcher, Sparrowhawk. That'd likely happen to any of us. Enough of the natter and let's drink. Um... I don't think I should drink, but it feels really rude to not drink here. To Ceres. Pass the mead and a tankard for the man. To Bran. Me want for nothing in the world beyond. To my beautiful companion. <laughs> okay, we're going all in, I guess. You've been great company. Sadly, it's time we moved on. Really? Indeed. We must talk, but not here. You shall learn all beyond that door. Wait, is she mad at me because I drank? I don't know. <laughs> oh, all right. Do you have no shame? Shame? Windblade. Why would I? A queen should join her king on his last journey. Tradition demands it. And the wraiths of Morhog that raise the village. Is that so? Freya eh? told him what to do. I tell it's you, true. he speaks no lie to the gods. The uh, what do you know? It's a party. Everyone's... On a cold oh, shore. Sven Ridge. That's the, the queen's son, right? Oh, the queen's right here. Praise the passengers. Geralt. This is Holger Blackhand, Berna, Bran's widow, and our hostess today. You've already met. Widow? A widow's duty is to lie beside her husband. A widow's duty is to care for the king's son. Not by our customs, it ain't. Your customs are barbarous. Not our place to criticize, Yen. All peoples do things their own way. We're talking about the self-immolation of women, not about decorating trees for Yule. Harsh custom, but this is a harsh land. Tradition is Skellige's backbone. People make laws, and people can change them. No, she's right. She's right. When she puts it like that, it's not just decorating trees for Christmas. Heard a lot of good things about Bran. 
I will miss him sorely. I was not his first wife, but I bore him his firstborn son and saw him off on his final journey. We lived a great many years together. She's gonna be forever vilified for not dying on the pyre with her husband. Let's move on, Yen. High time we did as well. Come, Svanriga. Svanriga. The Burn blind guy. The scheming whore. Refuses to admit her reign's ended. Brand knew how to keep her in line. Let's drink to his memory. Oh, I had a drink already. Sorry. Bran. A great king, a great man. May our next king be his equal. Geralt. All right. Let's go. Oh, I thought he would be offended, but he wasn't. Holger Blackhand. What do you want from me? Oh. Hold on. Can we read the entries we just got really quickly? Because I noticed we got quite a few. Holy God, that's that's a lot. Arnvald. After Guthlaf trusted Seneschal to the Uncrate Jarls, passed away a portion of his duties. Passed away, a portion of his duties were taken over by the Jarls' cupbearer Arnvald. This elderly Skelliger did not possess the far-reaching authority of his predecessor, but still had managed to make himself irreplaceable in his few years in the position. His purview included not only stalking the lauders and cellars of Caratrold, but also seeing to the needs of the keep's inhabitants, as well as the guests that visited it during feasts and other important ceremonies. Oh, wow, he's important enough to have his own entry here? It's a guy who greeted us in the beginning. Oh my god, all these names. Blue Boy Lugos. Madman Lugos's sole child and heir was a door strapping lad who was nothing like his father. His nickname dated from his childhood when bruises often covered his body, supposedly from the rough and rowdy place Skellige boys engage in. Yet others suspected that they came from his father's belt, rod, or fists. For rumor had it, Lugos Sr. did not wish to spoil his only child and thus punished them harshly for any minor cock up or grander failure. Yeah, I was just gonna say. If all the Skellige boys play rough, then why are you the only one with bruises? Ugh. Blue Boy Lugos. Okay. Ceres? 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 Ceres on Crate? While in Skellige, Geralt finally had the chance to meet Ceres on Crate, the younger of the Croc's two children. Known as Sparrowhawk to her friends, she was as fierce and swift as this name would indicate. Ceres was an islander through and through, and the spitting image of her father, having inherited all his courage, resolve, and stubbornness. Dauntlessly, she sought to prove at every turn that there was no task she could not fulfill as well as, or better than, any man in the islands, including her older brother, Yalmer. Okay. We haven't met Yalmer just yet. Pal... Palbjorn? I thought your name was spelled differently earlier. Like the J was after the B. Whatever. Young Halbjorn was the nephew of Holger Blackhand. Oh, the nephew of Holger Blackhand, the next guy. The blind guy. The Jarl of Pharaoh. And one of the claimants to the Skellige's crown. Despite his young age, he had already managed to achieve some renown, both during overseas raids and while fighting the monsters dwelling in the dangerous regions of the archipelago. His deeds had earned him enough fame, name recognition, and treasure that he stood a good chance at being elected king. Ah, oh, okay. Skellige's crown claimant. The guy with the, the metal bucket for a hat. Pharaoh. Is that one of the um, other islands at Skellige? I don't know if you can see it here. Yeah, I don't think we got that previously, but there's about one, two, three, four, five, and then the big one in the middle, six. Six islands here. And I guess they all have their own Jarls. So... Oh no! Frick, I lost some of them because I... Yeah, they went back to being alphabetical. God damn it. <laughs> Holger Blackhand. The dour-faced Jarl of Pharaoh owed his nickname to the dark coloring of his hand and forearm. Is it a burn? Left there by frostbite, he suffered when his longship hit an underwater boulder during a freak autumn blizzard. Even judging by Skellige's standards, where pillaging and plundering are practically rites of passage, Holger was considered a brutal pirate and raider. This opinion surely resulted from the fact that he attacked the villages and ships of the enemy Skellige clans with as much verve as he did the coastal settlements of Sidaris, Novigrad, and Nilfgaard. 
Okay, brutal guy. You can tell because he has a hook for a necklace. Ugh, so badass. And he's blind. And he has a frostbitten arm. Yeah. Otrig and Hinder. What does and mean? Everybody has it in their name. Like from? From the clan? Otrig and Hinder. Jarl Donar's grandson and heir was the youngest of the claimants to the Skellige throne. He dreamed of the heroic deeds and daring raids he would one day lead his subjects in accomplishing. But unlike the metal bucket guy, you have no accomplishments, right? What was that guy's name again? I lost him already. <laughs> the the metal... Halbjorn? Was it? Yeah, this guy. Oh, all the claimants are really young. What about their fathers and stuff? Don't they want to become the new king? Yeah. Svan Rige on Tursik? A hard life awaits the child who cannot escape his parents' shadow. Following the death of his father, the beloved King Bran, Svan Rige became the formal ruler of Clan Tursik, which controlled vast territory on the Isle of Anskellig. Yet this quiet and mild-mannered young man seemed firmly tied to the apron strings of his mother, Berna, who sought to control his every waking deed. With such an overbearing caretaker, it was hard to imagine how Svan Rige could ever grow into a man able to rule a mighty Skellige clan in his own right. Hmm, well I can see why people would be against Berna trying to change the rules here. But Berna can be trying to change the traditions for two reasons though. Like number one, maybe she just really thinks that, hey, it's time for Skellige to change. But the second reason would be that, you know, it puts her son in power, which gives her a lot of power. Hmm. So obviously, her wanting change is gonna look kinda selfish, right? Yeah. Damn, there's a lot hey, of new names here. I take a close look at that shaman Yort. They say he poisons the Jarl. The very reason Udalric's slowly losing his mind. Hmm? Could be true. People poisoning Jarls? Hmm. Let Freya be your guide. Uh, oh my god. It's a party, alright. Everyone's talking. The, beasts, the gods are not kind, Jarl. Our isles are in for hard times. What's that mean? The isles are in for hard times. Speak clear. The heart was deformed. An ill omen always. An ill omen for me as well. Hear me! What'll become of me? Fear not, Jarl. I'll not let you perish. I assure you. You need only follow my counsel. I present to you Geralt of Rivia. Geralt, this is Udalric, Jarl of the Brockfer clan, from Speakerog, and his advisor Hjort. The White Wolf. Greetings. The advisor looks exactly like the Peller. <laughs> uh, man, Yennefer knows everybody already. She's been doing her networking. Gotta say, never really believed in omens and auguries. One's belief, or lack thereof, makes no difference. Tell him what awaits him, what you told me. Your fates will intertwine, yours and Udalric's. You will walk in darkness, before you, fire and shadow. Hear that, Geralt? Everything clear now? Completely. Hmm. Uh, they seem to be kind of contradictory. I want to do the the second one, but uh. Didn't plan to visit Speakerog. Man is not the master of his fit. Hmm. Okay. Thanks for the prediction. You do not believe now, but you will yet remember my words. Speakerog. All right. If you don't mind, Yen. I'd like to ask about us. What's the oh. future hold in store? The one you seek, you will find. And then she will die. So I won't meet a tall, dark stranger? I shall have to content myself with you, Geralt. I sense the mockery in your voice, my lady. But may omens do not lie. No, Yennefer was very clearly shaken up just now, because it's yet another person telling us that Ciri will die. Mm. Nice to meet you both. A toast. To honor King Bran's memory. A another one? Uh, I- sorry, I, I wasn't planning on drinking. I'm the designated driver tonight. <laughs> A worthy gesture, little Rick. But I need to keep my head clear today. Got an important conversation later. Sorry. 
Ooh, this guy seems more offended. Strange man. I hear he's very sick. <laughs> Carrying himself unusually well tonight. Very sick. Come again? Hjort and Udelrik. Hjort and Udelrik. It is my humble opinion that the most one can learn from staring at the innards of a gutted animal is whether the poor beast was infested with parasites. Nevertheless, Hjort, like many other druids of Skellige, placed a great deal of trust in both haruspicy and chiromancy, and oniromancy as well, though that's more understandable, dreams being the royal root to one's soul. Word was that he commanded a great deal of respect and esteem amongst his fellow practitioners, having more than once accurately prophesied the future and interpreted the meaning of obtuse dreams. This druid was devoted to clan Brockvar with all his heart, and his knowledge and ability made him an excellent advisor, one in whom the Jarl of Spikarog, Udalric of clan Brockvar, placed a great deal of trust. Huh. He really looks like the Peller. Unlike, um... Unlike the main main places, the non skellige places, where the advisors tend to be things like sorcerers, sorceresses, or otherwise really fancy, luxurious people, in Skellige seems to be mostly druids. Udalric. Jarl Udalric was an enigmatic figure to say the least. Some mysterious ill surrounded him, causing others to shirk his company. Geralt could not help but notice that Udalric seemed did seem to be acting strangely, muttering to himself often and showing signs of suppressed panic, as if he lived in constant fear of something or someone. Oh. Anxiety? Oh. <laughs> he has a lot of anxiety. That's why he wants to, you know, know about the future, right? Darkness behind you. Darkness before you. Don't say that. Remember me, y'all? Oh. I remember, Garrett, I remember. <laughs> Forgive me, the gods speak. Oh. Remember me, y'all? Oh, okay. For I wonder if we can talk to... Oh, we need us a king who send us all against the Black Ones. I don't see. You got us going. Ah. How are things on Pharaoh? There is always. It's pissing buckets and fucking freezing. See, you're bursting with pride. No use cutting seal shit with honey. Pharaoh is a rock overgrown with pines, but with no need for more. Can't eat pine wood. But use it to build a longship, and you'll eat your fill of what others have grown and bred. After you've taken their wenches and their gold, burned their homes to the ground. That's how Clan Dimon lives. Cool. <laughs> Farewell. Uh, the queen and her son left, though. Well, yeah, what about the people back at our table? Got a minute? Sad when someone like Bran dies. Everyone says he was a good king. It's not fitting to speak elsewise about the dead. Mean you don't agree? Bran spent his life at sea. And while he was away, old feuds flared, devouring the isles from the inside. Folk grew furious, came when there was no one to mediate, resolve quarrels. But then Bran would return with loot, throw a feast, let the mead flow in rivers, and everyone loved him again. Yeah, the um, biography thing mentioned that earlier. He was going away solving other problems so that he wouldn't have to deal with the ones back at home. Farewell. Randy took that one. Who the got us got completely? Who the heck are we? Can He's raised the Dunar's villages. It'll be easy. Fair, fair. What? Where did you hear that? I must say. You're a little What, Nordling? We need us. I see three black ones alone against the black ones. Cut off his arm on the shoe. There's a random chicken running around. What did that itself be? Took this thing. Oh, God. He wants talking. He's raised Dunar's villages. No poison, no conspiracy. Gangrene said in after Bull. Arnvald. Yes. Hogs were up. Piles of it. Two guys are dancing and Shut gossiping at the same time. Does the witchcraft of more hogs hey, Lies. what are you doing there? Believe that shape. How do you? How do we get out there? Hjalmar and Kreat's gone to Unvik in threefold company. Bow, axe, and blade. Oh, the what's that guy doing there you? by himself? You're not there. Cross the wide somber sea. You're not there. Then I left myself behind. Come and you from treat my the heart and mine. It'll be Across easier going. Tell me, Lugos. Why are you sending your vermin to my isle? That squealing swine sounds uncannily like Donor. 
Too bad I don't talk to swine. Not talking to you, shit brains. I'm warning you. Uh, Lugos was the really strict father, right? Donar? Clan Donar? Was that the metal bucket guy's dad? Allow me to introduce Geralt of Rivia, a witcher. Geralt, Jarl Donar and Hinder, and Jarl Madman Lugos. Calling Lugos a madman's an insult to madmen? He's a common goat fucker. Call me a goat fucker one more time, and I'll chop off your head, stick it on a pike, and piss down your neck hole. Enough! Time to settle this. Here and now. Oh, ha ha ha! Giving me a true freight right now. Shat my best trousers. Put that away before you cut yourself, you cunt. Whoa, this is really none of my business. I'm like an outsider. Who am I to say anything? Just shut up, Geralt. <laughs> Uh <laughs> Settle this outside. Who the fuck are you to advise me, eh? Yeah. Someone with better manners. You insult Bran's memory and Crack's hospitality with this. Emperor would be very pleased to hear you quarrel. His Imperial Majesty is more than welcome to visit. Let him sail over here. We ain't afraid of the Black Ones. Raiding coastal villages is one thing. Total war with the Empire is another. Awfully mouthy, this one. Go stir your cauldron and pierce some boils, witch. Don't talk when you haven't got a fucking clue. They know. They know she's from Nilfgaard. Uh, come on, man. Just... <laughs> Calm down, Lugos. No one shall teach me how to fight. That was not my intention. Come, Geralt. I believe this discussion's run its course. Yeesh. People are arguing at a wake. Anybody else? Those are people drunk already. No, that's it. Greetings, Geralt. With Bran gone, by my count, that makes you the eldest of the Jarls. Aye, it does. But I trust it'll not be for long. Uh, not oh no! Like any of the others stand out, age you? Nay, but I'll gladly pass the honor to the next in line. I've lived my fill, steeped my hand in the blood of foes, felt the warmth of the southern sun and the bite of the northern winds, the touch of women of the east and west. Now I wish to die a death worthy of song. What's new on Hindersfjall? New. Lofoten lies in ruins. The garden has been devastated. And now we must deal with an Ulfoden. In short, everything's grand. I don't know what those words mean. <laughs> Farewell. Yeah. Just to confirm, I want to make sure I understand these family relations. You're a metal bucket guy's dad, right? Donor and Hindar. Few Jarls of Skellige were as honored and obeyed as Donar Arn Hindar, the eldest of their number. Despite his advanced age, he remained the active leader of his clan and its representative at all official gatherings. The only person able to break his composure was Madman Lugos, whose clan had long feuded with the An Hindars. Donar's home was, like Freya's temple, on Hindersfjall. As befits a neighbor to the gods, Donar was famed for his wise, considered opinions and his piety. This last did not, however, extend to the gods of the continent, whose rich sanctuaries he had often raided in his youth. <laughs> so much for piety. Madman Lugos Though Madman Lugos, Jarl of Clan Drummond, was nothing special in terms of size or strength. Wait, why? Why are their last names? So would this guy normally be called Lugos and Drummond? Is that how that works? Are you from the Clan Hindar? I don't know. Yeah. Wait, but your last name is Lugos, right? I don't know. <laughs> was nothing special in terms of size or strength. Most men in the Isles still stepped aside when they saw him coming, eternally feuding with his neighbors. Lugos had a reputation for a furious and violent temper and managed to get into shouting matches with even the usually placid Donar and Hindar. Yet Lugos' biggest rival was Krak on Crate, whom he accused of stealing part of his domain, which in his reckoning encompassed all of Art Skellig. The clans' quarrel went back hundreds of years, and there was nothing to indicate it would end while these two fierce enemies lived. Lugos hated Krak with a passion, dampened only by the laws of Skellige, 
and the disproportionate balance of power between the two clans. Ha. Huh. You're the dad of Blue Boy Lugos. Donor and Hindar is the dad of... Hyal... This guy? Halbjorn? No, this guy's a nephew of the... Um, the blind guy. What the, who the hell is your son? Or whoever. Oh, don't tell me your son is the useless one. Is it? Uncrate... Uh, I forgot the useless son's name already. This guy, Otrig. Yeah, this guy didn't do anything. Jarl Donor's grandson. Right, Jarl Donor is the oldest one, and he's the youngest one as a candidate to claim the throne. Okay. Oh, we're going here. Peace and quiet. What now? Now we pay a visit to Ermion's laboratory. Didn't know we'd been invited. Because we've not been. Uh... Why are we going there? You wanna- I mean, we're going, but you wanna tell me? <laughs> Take it Ermion won't be there. That's right. And what's the purpose of this visit? We're looking for an object. The Mask of Erberos. We'll need it. Come, Geralt. Now you'll tell me why you need this mask. Oh, I shall. In due course. Take it you'll decide when. Correct. Alright. Mask of Orboros? Or Erberos, when they say it with um, the British accent. Well, you take your time in telling me whatever. I'll take my time looking around here, too. Hinders fall, heavy armor. Ogroid oil. Got a nice cozy room here. Whoa, look at that gigantic head. That's huge. The Nilfgaard Wars, or a history of our time. A book we haven't read. It came as a surprise to many when, a mere three years after the second war against Nilfgaard, the war which, it was said, would end all wars, the Empire's forces once again invaded the North. To the perceptive student of history, however, this development was not all that surprising. Nilfgaard's economy and political system have, for decades, relied on expansion and conquest for continued survival. Attentive analysis shows that Nilfgaard never abandoned its plan to subjugate the North. Contrary to popular belief, imperial diplomats and not sorceresses were behind the death of King Foltest. They also brought about the crisis during the summit of mages and monarchs at Loch Muin. The current conflict is thus the result of cold calculation and long-term planning. Before the wax had time to dry on the peace of Sintra, Emir Var Emres had already begun to prepare for the new war. The next war, which ultimately broke out in the spring of 1270. The war's first stage went exactly as the Emperor had planned. In a matter of months, Lyria, Edern, and Tamaria found themselves in the shadow of the Black Banner. If not for the early frosts of December 1270 and the daring of King Radovid, who, instead of concentrating his forces on the Pontar, invaded Kedwin, thereby doubling his territory and strength, all the north would surely now be but another province in the vast empire of Nilfgaard. Huh, well, Radovid can't be that bad of a king. That incompetent of a king, I should say. To think I saved Henselt, hoping that he would help reunite the North. But he died off so easily. Hey, Yennefer! Ah, uh, sorry, we can go now. The Mask of Orboros. Ah, uh, we don't- we can't see it right now, but on the loading screen? The loading icon is an Ouroboros, I think. I wonder if that's related. We going here? Ouroboros is the um, snake eating its own tail, or whatever, right? A mask of Ouroboros? I mean, we're doing this thing, so I wish you would tell me a little bit more. You can read my mind, but I can't read yours. 
It would be nice if we got a little bit more. But maybe, maybe she has her reasons. I don't know. Geralt doesn't seem particularly bothered anyway. I guess that's the, the usual mode of operation for us. And I guess, of course, it's also because Geralt trusts Yennefer in whatever she wants to do. Egg. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Oh, keep going. Keep going. I'm sure they'll appreciate me taking everything here. Footsteps. Oh. Shh. Guards. Hide behind the tapestry. Sparrows chip, while starlings chirp. What do jackdaws do? Jackdaws caw, goldfinches warble, and cranes whoop, whereas peacocks screech. <laughs> Hawks scream, larks trill, and doves, they coo. That's all of them. Hmm. What about nightingales? All right, nightingales croon. Oh my god, this was the most cliché hiding thing ever! <laughs> Good thing they weren't paying attention. <laughs> that was... close. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Alright. Oh, we're just gonna walk past it? <laughs> Let's get going then, before someone else comes. This is massive. Far bigger than the Vizeman Castle. 